Hey everyone, welcome back to FTB Infinity, and this is episode two. So I just want to sort of go through what I have done since the end of the last episode. Well, firstly, you probably saw down there, I've made a really pathetic attempt at starting a farm. I will kind of do something a little bit better as we move forward, but I actually went out and killed a load of a load of cows and pigs etc just to get some meat it gives you uh, more hunger units back and it was just it was just easier to do than messing around with a farm at the moment because i really wanted to sort of get on and you know get some bits and pieces done in here so i've made some stairs i used the carpenter's block mod for that i've made another room through here ready for our machines to go into it's probably a lot bigger than it needs to be but there you go. I said in episode one that I wanted everything to be kind of like, you know, big and open. And it kind of is. I've used the Chisel 2 mod quite extensively in here. I've used the same sunken stone panels that I use next door, just so that it gives that a bit of sort of like continuity all the way through. I've used the sort of a similar thing, but just with cobblestone around the edge here. And for the ceiling, I've used uh, cobblestone. I think it's called small stone tiles. Don't really like this dark patch in the middle, but there's kind of nothing I can do about that at the moment. I will try to sort that out in the future. But for now, if I don't look up, I don't see it. And I've just got some passages going off to the side here. They don't go anywhere as yet. It's just in readiness for when I expand out again. So, oh yeah, and the ladder. I used the carpenter's ladder from the, again from the carpenter's block blocks mod. I prefer it to the vanilla ladder for two reasons. Number one is obviously because it's 3D and so it looks a little bit better there. And also because it's part of the carpenter's blocks mod, then you can texture it however you want. I've just used oak wood because uh, I just think it looks quite nice. It's it's sort of pretty vanilla-y, but it does the job for me. So before I crack on, there's just a couple of thoughts that I had between episodes when I was looking through the mod pack. Number one is we're going to have a lot of machines going on and most of those are going to need power in one way or another. So having looked through the various mods, there's a lot of different ways that you can create power right through from sort of early generators that you can use in the say for example the extra utilities mod right through to to big reactors so we're really going to have to have a think about how we do our power going forward and secondly is that all the machines that we're going to have are going to require a lot of resources to to make and to run and with that in mind I don't really want to be down there with a pickaxe just mining away, you know, for, for all my life, for, you know, forever, really. So I had a little bit of a think, and I've actually done something about this already, what I wanted to do. Now, the two quarries, the Ender Quarry and the Billcraft Bill Quarry, I kind of didn't go down that route the ender quarry is just too expensive i don't have any ender pearls yet i mean i don't have a mob farm anyway i will have i'm gonna have something over here quite soon but we haven't got there yet and the build craft quarry it's not too expensive it uses a bit of diamond and a bit of gold but it does create lag so i went with and i just want to make sure that i've got some coal just going to grab some out of here. I went with the... Let's get down here. The Computer Craft Mining Turtle. Now, it's relatively easy to build. I mean, if you want to see the recipe for it, you can, you can sort of look that up in any eye. As I said, it is really, really quite simple. But... The main thing with it, why, why I liked it, is because you can kind of just set it off. It goes away. It runs. It runs nicely. It doesn't use a massive amount of, of fuel 
when you compare it to something like the Buildcraft quarry, which needs to have, you know, more than one redstone engine running it that are all using fuel. And you can sort of program it to, to do pretty much what you want. So there's a little bit more flexibility. Now, that said, I haven't got a massive amount of experience in computer craft. In fact, it's probably fair to say that I've got next to none. But it's something I've wanted to have a go with for a while. Now, I'm just actually going to pop some bits underneath this because I need to get this out and reface it the right way around. The reason, and there's actually nothing in this, the reason why I want to do that is because the only, and this is the only downside of this, is when you when you restart Minecraft or when you close Minecraft, this actually stops working and it sort of comes back in so that's the direction that you want it. It sort of comes back in the wrong in the wrong direction. So what I mean is if I was to sort of restart that as it was, it would just mine this way and go straight across there, which I don't really want. So anyway, enough waffle. You basically stick some coal in here. This is how easy it is. Then there's a program called Refuel All. If you just press that, all of that coal has now disappeared from its little inventory here and has now gone into the mining turtle. So we've got a fuel level of 8,320, which will last us for quite a while. And the program that we want is called Excavate. In fact, if I just come and show you all the programs that are available, and you can write your own as well, but I'm just nowhere near that level. We've got quite a few programs that we can use here, most of which I don't know what they do yet. I just had a look up at the Excavate program. But there's quite a lot there as standard. And I wanted it. I wanted it to do a twenty-five by twenty-five hole, which it will do all the way down to bedrock, and then you just press go, and that basically has now gone off on its way, and periodically it will come back to this chest and dump what it's got inside the chest just to clear out its inventory. And there you go. You can just sort of get on and do whatever else you need to do because that will just carry on until it runs out of fuel or until the inventory that it's using is full. So let's now start off with making some machines. Okay, so what I am going to want to do is get something that's better than this grindstone. Like I said, it's a great thing to have early on, but it does take absolutely forever to, you know, to, to grind the ores. You just, you just feel like you're just playing most of the game, just holding down the right button, operating this thing. So the choices that we've re realistically got at the beginning here is either to go the Industrial Craft 2 route and make the Macerator, or the thermal expansion route and make the pulverizer. Now they've both got their they've both got their benefits. They're both really they're both really good machines. I've decided to go the thermal expansion route and the reason and, and this is really the only reason is because the therm the thermal expansion stuff you can pick that up and move it out the way and move it about as you like. The IC2 stuff as you probably know, as soon as you pick up a machine, it breaks unless you use the wrench. And even with the wrench, you have a chance of the machine breaking. So thermal expansion it is. So we're going to start off with making a generator. And like I said, I'm going to use the furnace generator from the extra utilities mod. Really easy to make, as you can see, just got some iron, an iron block, a furnace, and a couple of bits of redstone. So let's just grab some redstone out of here. And I think we're going to need some, yeah, we're going to need to grab some cobblestone as well so that we can make the furnace. Let's get the furnace made first of all. Then we're going to need a 
block of iron. Pop the iron there, pop the furnace there. Iron goes around the top like this, a couple of bits of redstone, and there's our generator. So we'll go and put that, I think, over here will probably be a good place to start off with, like so. And then we'll make the pulverizer. So again, this isn't massively, this isn't massively expensive. If you've done a little bit of mining at the beginning of the game, it's fairly easy to get. There are different versions of it, basic right through to the resonant one. We want the basic one. So we want a basic machine frame, which is just a tin gear with some glass and iron around it. The tin gear is relatively easy to make. So we've just got some iron surrounded by some tin ingots. Have I got those in my inventory? No. So I need to just go and grab some tin wherever I have put my tin. I'm not sure that... Yeah, there we go. So put the tin like so, some iron just there. There's our tin gear. And then let's just wait for that to get back to basic just so that we can remember the recipe like so. So there we go. Some glass we need. I remember I put my glass. Hopefully. Far away. Oh, there it is. I kind of did do a little bit of preparation, as you can see there, but I didn't manage to get it all together. So the gear in there. And there's some iron in the corners. And there is our basic machine, a basic machine frame. Then we're going to need some copper gears. Well, again, that's easy. That is just some copper around iron. So let's just grab our copper. So we need two of those and a couple of bits of iron in the center that's our copper gears we've already got our flint and yeah so we just need to make a piston so we're going to need some wood for that have i got that stuff yes i have there's our piston and a redstone reception coil which is just some redstone and some gold i've got a couple of bits of gold ready for that as well what i yeah, there we go. There is our redstone reception coil. And now I think we've got everything that we need to actually slot this together. Let's just have a look. Yes, we have. So there is our pulverizer. So we can go and put that next to the furnace generator and just pop that there. And now you can basically, once we've got some coal in here, we can actually get that powered up and that will start to actually pulverize down the stuff into ores that we've collected. So let's just grab some ore uh, for now. I think we'll grab some copper because we're going to need some of that shortly anyway. And we'll put that in there. So put some coal into the furnace generator, put some copper into here and yeah there we go so that's starting to actually output that now this is going to obviously output dust the same way that the grindstone does and what i'd quite like is to have this a little bit more automated into a furnace but i think instead of building a normal furnace we could probably build the redstone furnace so let's have a let's have a quick look and see so again, that's from the thermal expansion mod. So we're going to need another basic machine frame, which I think we can do. But we're also going to need some bricks. So we've got some clay in here already. I was going to try and be a little bit prepared and have some made already. But of course, I didn't actually have any coal in there. And we're going to need more clay than that. So let's just... Pop that in there, pop that in there, and that'll be making some bricks. And then let's just make that basic machine frame so we can get onto it 
like so. So yeah, again, we're going to need a tin gear, some iron and some glass. So let's just quickly get the tin gear made. So that's a piece of iron surrounded by tin. And there is our tin gear. Then we put in the pieces of glass, some iron around there. And there is our basic machine frame. And we're also going to need some more copper gears. Thankfully, we've got enough copper already. So in fact, we need two of those. So might as well just make those straight away. Make life easy for ourselves. And we're also going to need another redstone reception coil like that and yeah so we're just waiting for the bricks to actually come out so i think we're gonna need eight of those yeah because it's four it's four bricks per brick block so just one more and then we are good to go and we've got our redstone furnace now that isn't going to be able to be powered straight away because the furnace is sitting on the left hand side of the pulverizer let's just make those quickly and then we can get that together so i think what we're going to need to do is get some sort of wire or cabling underneath there so yeah so basically this will come out into here, but we're actually going to need RF to do that. And we need to configure this as well so that the we've actually got the... I'm not really sure where the input to this is, but there we go. So there's the, there's the input. And we just need to change that side to the red. Be sure the output color there we go so that will once it's done that will output from there into a chest when we put it next to it now the actual cable i think it's i think you can make like copper is it copper cable copper cable so that works on now uh, that only works for eu so what have we got in ender io let's just have a Let's just have a quick look in Ender IO and see what we've got in there. Because I think we've got there, there we go. So energy conduit. So there's three levels of that. What, what do we need for the simplest one? Some conductive iron and conductive iron. Okay, conductive iron is made in the alloy smelter. So before we can get that, we're gonna need, yeah, and that's the only way that you can make it. So we are gonna need an alloy smelter before we can actually get any of that going on so what does the alloy smelter take let's have a quick look and there we go alloy smelter so we just need some furnaces some iron which we've got and a machine frame so we've got all that a basic capacitor Okay, so I think actually we can relatively easily make that. So I'm just going to quickly go away and get together all the bits so that we can just put that together and I'll be back when I have. Okay, so we've got together most of the bits that we need, I think, to make the alloy smelter. So we're going to need some gold nuggets. That, that's to start off with. And that is for the, the chassis. So for the capacitor, so that just needs nuggets around some copper and some redstone like that. We've actually got enough to make two of those. And then we also will need some furnaces. So I'm hopefully, hopefully got enough to make, yeah, so three furnaces we're going to need. And let's just get rid of that. We are going to need a cauldron. So let's just get that together. And again, let's just get rid of all those bits. I think that is all that we need. So we just need to put that uh, chassis together like so. And then we can get the alloy smelter. Now, we are going to put the alloy smelter the other side of this generator. So we'll just pop that there and 
I think we'll pop the torch up here just to make sure that uh, everything's lit up. Again, if you just press Control and F7, then that will automatically show you if there are any areas that are not lit enough, and we are okay for that. So we need some redstone and some iron, which we have both of. So let's just pop some redstone in there and some iron. And that's then going to make our whatever it is that we need. I can't remember what it is for the, um, for the Ender IO, for the energy conducting wire, the energy conduit even. Yeah, so it's the conductive iron. So let's just grab a couple of pieces of that. When it's done, there we go. So we've got one piece of that. And we need three pieces in order to make the energy conduit. And then we're also going to need some of this conduit binder. Now, to do that, we need some binder composite. And in order to make that, well, we've basically got the same stuff that we need to make grout. So let's go and see, while we're waiting for the rest of that iron to smelt, whether or not we've got enough bits and pieces to do that. So there's some of that. Then we've got some clay. And I'm going to need some sand. Got to say, I'd be really surprised if we didn't have any sand. And we haven't got any. Oh, yes, we have. There we go. So there's some sand. I'm just going to pop some of these bits away that I don't actually need right now, as always. And let's go and get together some of this conduit binder. So how much of this can we make? Let's say make 24 of that. And then we pop that into... A furnace with some coal like so and then we'll get our conduit binder and while that's doing let's just see if our alloy smelter has done what we need it to do as I'm hoping that when you do this yes yeah, so you you actually get eight of these uh, per per lot so we've got enough those machines are quite noisy We've got enough of the conductive iron and we've got enough conduit binder just to make one of these things. So let's just go ahead and make some of that. And then we should just be able, it should just be a case of if we just mine out some of these blocks under here, let's just get rid of that. It should just be a case of popping that down and it all links up. Well, I'm hoping it is. Yes, it is. And there we go. So now our redstone furnace is also working. And we are just going to need a chest just to grab all of that stuff that comes out. So we will just quickly make a chest. And in fact, can we make an iron chest? Is it? I think it's just a case of putting iron round. Yes, it is, which will be a little bit bigger. And we can pop that down next to the redstone furnace. And hopefully that will grab all of the stuff that comes out. Yes, it is. Excellent. And lastly, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll put a hopper above here just so that we can bung the stuff in perhaps a chest on top of that as well so let's just quickly go and get a hopper sorted I can't actually remember the recipe for a hopper so rather sadly I am gonna have to to look that up so we just need a another chest so we need two chests because we're gonna have one above it then we pop one of those in there with the, that's the hopper, and put that back, pop that there. So we should be able now 
to put the hopper just there, the chest above the hopper, and then if we just go and grab a load of our ores that we want smelting, so we'll grab the silver, the yellowite, the uranium, and the, oh, we haven't got any room for the aluminium, let's just grab the aluminium as well. Have we got anything else anywhere? Uh, no, I'm going to leave our ferris for now. I know that we'll use that for Invar going forward, but I've got a feeling that there's something else that we need to save that for. I just can't remember what it is at the moment. So we just pop all of those in there, and then that's going into our hopper, and then that is going, hopefully, into our ah this needs to be an input on top that is why so in fact it is an input on the top why isn't that working let's just i think i've actually placed that incorrectly let's just see how that needs to go perhaps it's a shift shift click yes it is right and now if we go back and put all of those ores back in there, we can now see that that's going into our hopper and then that's going into our pulverizer, which we're going to our redstone furnace and out into our chest. Excellent. And then later on, we'll be able to get some pipes and, you know, a, a sorting system so that anything that we mine up can automatically come into here and output into the into the chest and then we can also have perhaps another sort of system where anything that doesn't want to be uh, pulverized can sort of come over here or something okay so that is that's looking pretty good and i think i'm quite happy with how that's going i'm a little bit concerned that i'm not i've not really got that much coal so this isn't going to run for that long Let's just go and have a quick look and see how our mining turtle is doing. And hopefully, I did have to go, I did have to actually go down there and set that off running again once today already. And stuck on the ladder. And that hasn't actually gone and collected any coal as yet. Just kind of hoping that it would. Um, right, so we may well have to go and manually grab a load of coal, but that's not going to keep us going for long because the energy requirements of these machines, as I say, that it's going to use quite a lot of energy. So I think what we will do for the next episode is set up a tree farm and we will use the planter and the harvester to automate that. And then we can turn all that into charcoal and that can start to power our machines. But I think we've run out of time today, so we'll say we'll do that in the next episode. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching. And I hope that you'll join me for episode three. If you like the video, leave us a like. And until next time, take care. Bye.